What is up guys? Welcome back to another daily build video. This time we're talking about the Reventon in Hyper. Let's go. Real quick before I get into the video, if you're looking for any of my Motorfest tunes or my Need for Speed Heat builds, I've moved everything to my website. It's MilitiaGamingCo.com. There's links in the main navigation menu for Need for Speed Heat builds and Motorfest Pro settings. So click those if you're looking for that. The link to the site is actually in the description of this video. All right, enjoy. All right, before I get into the pro settings for the car, you have to know that this car is absolutely insane and I don't know what took me so long to actually try the car. It might have been money or I don't know. I just felt like I was ignoring it for some reason. I even got a few comments in previous daily build videos that suggested to use this car. It's insane. Use it, use it. Anyway, I finally got around to testing this car and you guys were right. It ran my second fastest time on my test course, which is achieving immortality for hypercars. I actually used two different courses to sort of judge where the hypercars land. And this one ran the second fastest time of 120.417. Now, obviously, when you compare that with all of the other cars that are in the 120 range, you're looking at cars that are really, really good in the class. And these cars could probably be interchangeable. I mean, driving skill for sure can make the difference of a couple of tenths here and there. Even a whole second could be determined by whether or not I braked too hard on one corner or downshifted too early or whatever. So just take these results with a grain of salt, but let's put this on the screen. This is the second fastest time next to the Agera R. Also keep in mind, these times are run with no NOS affixes. It's basically just like grand race status, like green parts, no legend points, no NOS affixes, no nitro chemist, none of that. So you're looking at 120.417 next to an Agera R with a 119.651. Now with Nitro Chemist and a Slipstream and all that, we can get it down to about 115, not with this car, but with the Agera R. So you can kind of see how the difference is there with uh, Nitro affixes and Slipstream. It makes a huge difference. Anyway, let's get back to the Reventon. So this thing is absolutely insane. It has a nice wide body kit that I really strongly recommend you put on it. Even if you're not a fan of wide bodies, you have to do it because the car just feels so much better. And then I've got a nice vanity tire on there that sort of matches my colors. Kinda, not really, but it's the only one that had any blue in it that I have that actually sticks the wheels out a little bit farther. So that is what it is. Let's get into the pro settings real quick. And then for this video, I actually did something a little bit different. I usually wanna take the car on a grand race to kind of show you how it does, but I feel like that formula is getting a little bit stale. So I wanna switch it up and show you my best run with this car on the test course. I actually recorded it and uh, then you can kind of see how it handles on that course, how I drive it. And obviously it's not like my best ever, right? It's the best I did during testing. If I spent way more attempts on this, I bet you it can get the time down a little bit more, but that can be said for literally every car on the test list. So I just do as much as I possibly can to get the tune right. And then I go for a few attempts and try to get that time down as fast as possible. But anyway, watch it and let me know what you think. Here are the pro settings for it. So I've got the power distribution at 31%. And then the brake balance is stock. If we move down into the suspension and the aero, I made very, very minor changes. The car feels really good out of the box. And I highly recommend this for anybody that is struggling with hypercar class. It is very controllable and the steering is very predictable. So we've got minus five on the load rear. We go into the suspension, plus five in the rear, and then plus four on the compression rear, and then plus four on the rebound rear. If we go down to the anti-roll bars, plus 10 in the front, plus seven in the rear, and then the camber is minus 0.25 and minus 0.15. Again, all these changes are adding just a slight bit of responsiveness to the steering and a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of oversteer uh, in addition to what it already has stock. The car feels so good stock. I really hesitated to make any real significant changes here because it just felt very, very nice. So anyway, enjoy this run and let me know what you think of this new format. If you would prefer to see grand races or you prefer to see some of the testing, then uh, let me know in the comments, please, because I just want to make the content as enjoyable as possible for you guys. And maybe I'll switch it up depending on the car. So Anyway, thank you so much. Enjoy the run. I'll catch you on the next daily build. Trigger out.